It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. How are you guys? Uh, getting back now to my uh, Craftsman 522 snowblower. As you guys know, I got these two for free. Well, this one as well as a Toro that's in a lot worse shape, you know. Got it from uh, Sam and Leo over at SNL Brothers of Huntington. Uh, they just gave it to me for free because they're local landscapers and uh, I know them and uh, they didn't want it anymore. So I took it home. As you guys know, I, I primed this and I started up. Um, it only runs on choke though. Uh, the auger seems to work when the engine is running um, and the drive also works too, but once you depress it, it wants to stall because it's under load. So the carburetor needs to be cleaned and also we want to put this back on its service position check out the drive system, maybe it needs a little bit of lubing up, you know. It's probably been sitting outside for a long time, and uh, all the joints down there, the friction disc, the wheel, and all that stuff, it might be pretty rusted up, which is the reason why it's not running as smooth as it should. But, uh, as you also know from my previous episode on this uh, particular snowblower, um, the electric start was seized up. The shaft was all rusted up, so we took off the uh, starter, and uh, we oiled it a lot, lubed it a lot with uh, penetrating oil as well as some spray grease from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. So today I'm going to uh, take off this, um, clean the carburetor if you will. Uh, since it runs, uh, even though it's on, it only runs on choke and in the middle sometimes, right? Um, I think we should just do a quick and dirty, but you know, I'm going to remove this uh, heater box anyway so we can get a better look at it. Just a 5 16 bolt here, there, and there. This comes right off. So this way we get a good look at it. It doesn't look too bad. And it, like I said, it runs on choke, so it can't be too bad. But we're going to uh, put this on its service position. But right now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start it up and let you see what, I'm, what I mean about it. If the works good, you can still see that there's uh, fluid going in there. So I hope you guys can see from this angle, because this is one of those uh, older snow blowers, right? The uh, auger is actually curved, so when you put it on its service position, it leans forward a little bit. But you know, we have very good access to the carburetor right here, and since it does start and run on choke, we have a 7 16 bolt here, and this is actually the older kind where it's a um, an adjustable uh, jet nut. It's very greasy and oily here. It's like somebody put two stroke gas in here, you know? Here's the jet nut, right? You have to remove the, uh, this screw here all the way out so you can properly clean it. Let's take the bolt off. As you can see, it's starting to already leak. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. This button over here is for draining the uh, fuel inside the bowl whenever you want to. Like if you did a fuel shut off on here, store it for the summer or something, you would uh, engage the fuel shut off to stop the fuel from going in here and then pushing this button and all the fuel from the carburetor bowl will leak out so you can properly store it. 
I don't really use that very often. But um, you can see we have good access here to the pin. Just remove the pin. Sometimes you need some needle nose to get it out. I think we'll get it. Got some needle nose here to pull this pin out. There's a pin. We're going to remove the uh, float and the needle. Needle looks good. Good tip. Smooth. Not, not a lot of gum or any at all. It's a good needle. So you shake the uh, float to see if it's uh, dry on the inside. There's no fuel in here, so it's dry. If you feel sloshing around a fuel in here, it means your float is bad and it'll weigh down your float, which means it'll continuously flow fuel into your crankcase. This is a good float. This is a good pin. It's a good needle. The bowl is not very dirty. May need a little bit of cleaning. The emulsion tube needs to be cleaned out. So you're just going to use some uh, carb cleaner, or in this case we're using some contact cleaner. It's a quick drying formula. and. Uh, People use this for their uh, race engines over at uh, you know the track. Um, this is good because it doesn't blow up the gaskets on your carburetor. That carburetor cleaner does. So I'm just blowing some in the emulsion tube here. Here's a Welsh plug over here. cleaning up this area here, but it doesn't seem to be too dirty. So what I'm going to do is, you see this uh, jet nut here, right, with the gasket? This is the fuel air mixture screw. Usually you turn it in one and a half. You turn it in all the way, right? And you back it out one and a half for the setting. Something like that, you know? But I'm going to remove it all the way, clean the hole. You see this jet nut, um, this uh, screw here? The tip is broken. It should be very sharp, but it looks like it's broken. I mean, it, it affects it somewhat, but not so much. You can adjust the, uh, the way it runs by just pushing it in and out. Ideally, if I had another one, I'd replace it with a sharper needle. Like I said, I don't even know what I'm going to do with this thing, you know? I was selling it as is for like uh, $75 or 100 bucks, but I don't think anybody would buy it, so I'm just fiddling with it, seeing if it runs better after I clean this thing. So uh, I can see that the hole is clear, so I'm kind of surprised that it doesn't stay running. It may have something to do with the uh, that needle not being sharp. Sometimes that's all you need, especially when there's not a lot of um, gunk build up in there, you know, uh, gelatin-like uh, substance. As long as you don't have a lot of debris in here, you know, just clean it out. It doesn't have to be completely perfect, but I'm kind of anal, so I want to try to get all the gunk out as much as I can. Not necessary. So as long as you don't have debris or sediment building up in here that will clog your emulsion tube or the needle, you're good to go. But I don't know, I just, I'm anal like that, so I want to just get it pretty much perfect, you know. As long as you're here, might as well do it. And I haven't said this in a while, but gotta clean your shit.
offside. That's all it takes. Just get some uh, old rags, old socks, anything you can use to uh, just clean it up a little bit. That's pretty good. That's right, real time. I'm not even stopping it. I mean, that should be it. On the pin, there's the part where the end of the clip sticks out, the sharp part, right? They always say that it has to be inboard, but I don't really know if there's a big difference to it. You know what I'm saying? You just let it rest there like that. Hold it so it doesn't fall out. Put it back into this hole again, see it wants to slide out. Yeah, I want to I wanna just put it in, but I don't want to block your view. That's hard. Yeah, that kind of sticks up a little too much. I'm going to mess with this a little bit. So I finally got that on pretty well, and it, there's a gap here between this and this. See uh, the plane over here, right? And this is not actually exactly parallel. The float and the base of it is not actually parallel. The way the Tecumsehs are, you actually have to have it dip down a little bit like that at an angle. There's a measuring tool it looks like a screwdriver that you buy from Tecumseh. It has the exact measurement between there and there. Sometimes you, uh, you do this enough and just look at it, you'll know that that's about right. After a while, you just know that it's just about right. Also, another thing is when you put the bowl on, especially for the Tecumsehs, you'll see that there's a slight depression over here at the, uh, like a third of a crescent right here. This is the depression, right? The bowl is supposed to be allowed to go into this area here. So if you look at this line right there, right, that has to be exactly matched up parallel to where this pin is. So in other words, it has to be like that. You following what I'm saying? It can't be like this or like that, otherwise the flow will get stuck. So it's got to go like right there. I know a lot of you guys know that, but this is for the people who don't know that. Now I'm going to stick this, uh, like I said, I'd like to change this thing. I should go look for another one, but... We're going to give it a try anyway. It's easy to change if it's not right, you know. I'm going to look at my bag of parts and see if I have another one of these things that has a sharp needle. But anyway, you just turn this all the way in, see? All the way to until you can't turn it anymore, which is right there. And then you'll look at this line there, right? You just keep the measure of it like at 12 o'clock, right? So you're going to do one full turn out. So that's a half. That's one full turn and then another half. So one and a half turns out. Should be a good measure of uh, the start. But because that needle is busted on the, in the tip, it may have to be turned in more, you know, for the blood right. Ideally, I would like to get to change the pin to make it right. Now, if you wanted to, just go buy a whole new carburetor. These carburetors for this model, very cheap. Sometimes I found them for five bucks. Five bucks. When I do find them for less than five bucks, I'll buy like five of them just to keep them in stock. I believe I do have this in stock. So, I don't want to spend any money on this thing, you know what I mean? I just want to get rid of it, you know?
I'm gonna put this up right now. Delay that order, soldier. While we have it on its uh, face, might as well check out the uh, the bottom here. It's obviously missing the plate that goes here. This is the engagement for the wheel, the friction disc. You turn this thing, it pushes down on the um, belt, which seems very flimsy actually, and engages the wheel. It looks okay though. This model is very interesting because um, it actually doesn't have a, uh, a a moving wheel that's onto the axle. See, so the the ones that I'm familiar with is that there's actually a wheel. Uh, I guess they call it a no, it's not a friction disc. The friction disc is this thing, but the wheel that is on this axle, where where you turn the thing, right? It tells you. It actually moves along the friction disc. If it's close together, it'll go slow. If it's on the ends, it'll go fast. If you pull it all the way over here, it'll go in reverse, okay? But this one's actually this way, where you engage the drive, right? It actually pushes down on the belt. This pulley seems to be attached to this auger pulley here, right? And so when this is depressed, it turns the belt, turns this pulley, this pulley turns the transmission. There's actually a transmission gearbox here that turns this. Turns the wheels. It's pretty cool. I've never seen one like this. So it's an entire gearbox over here. You know? But everything looks in order, you know. Um, I don't really think I'm going to do anything with it. Because uh, it, it seems to all seem to work, you know. You engage the drive, tightens the belt, turns the gear, moves the wheels. This, uh, these chains here, they don't seem to be stock to this because there's a big bunch of chains over here, you know. Like it's too big. So it scratches the uh, body of it. But I'm going to leave this way it is. It seems like it's okay. So, Quinn, the mailman, came by again. That's right. Another half hour talking about the new Star Wars movie. I haven't seen it yet. I don't know if I will now. Anyway, so as long as I'm standing here, I might as well just take some of this uh, red and tacky spray grease and just help along the... Uh, help along the... Um... See, now I'm thinking about the Star Wars thing. I'm not really thinking help the chain a little bit, you know. Now I'm just going to get some of the uh, movable joints with uh, Toolbox Buddy, basically WD-40, but this is from Lucas Oil Products. See how many products they have? Shooting the... Uh the joints, everything that moves, just to keep it lubricated well. Right where the axle is, where the bearings are. There's not too many movable joints here. Just to prevent it from uh, rusting. <laughs> rusting any further. I'm going to put it back on its uh, regular position now. And uh, let's give her a whirl, eh? Seems to be a little bit of leakage.
chemicals in there. Good thing I didn't uh, engage it, huh? If I engaged it, I would have had a rag stuck in the arm. I would have sucked. see um, this thing runs really nicely now uh, I didn't really think the carburetor was all that dirty but apparently it runs really well see it was on full choke and then it was on full run and it was running great uh, when I turned the fuel adjustment screw right you turn it all the way down and it wants to stall you then let it out a little bit and you get it to where it's at the highest throttle and this is all the way to the top right and then uh, as you saw, when I brought it back down to idle, it idled pretty well too without stalling. Um, also, it, uh, it seems like it, the auger and the impeller works, as well as forward and backwards works as well. So this thing's good to go, man. Uh, it just needed a little bit of a carb clean. We call that a quick and dirty because we didn't have to remove the entire carburetor, right? And uh, as you saw here, this part here was actually attached to this 
key switch, right? It doesn't work. So basically I'm bypassing it by taking this, which was attached to the key switch, and putting it right over here. Now this, it doesn't really fit that well, so I have to crimp it a little bit just to get it tight over here. But then it works from just putting this all the way down and having it grounded out. That's how you stop it. So I'm going to do that. In the meantime, this is a perfectly good key for my lawn tractors, which I'm short on. And I always need a switch, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to take this switch off and this, keep this key because you can stop it through this fashion over here. Uh, then I'm going to replace the heater box and also find a couple of screws for this belt cover here. This belt cover just comes off. I'm going to find a 3 8 bolt, which is usually what it is, and just replace it on here. So that was it. Um, pretty easy to fix. If I could get this to work, to fit on here pretty well, but it doesn't, doesn't really fit. Oh, there we go. Yeah, find a couple of bolts and put that on there. We uh, lubricated the uh, the chain as well as some of the moving joints, but uh, you know, honestly, I could sell this as is. You know, um, it works. Moves forward. It throws snow, probably. Uh, I can't wait until we get some snow, but uh, it's not looking likely. I mean, it's uh, almost mid-January, and uh, we haven't had anything so far. Nothing. You know? Nothing on the horizon, either. Uh, look at the spark works. Engine runs well. Auger and impeller work. Drive system moves forward and backwards. Got chains. Holds air. Not too bad, actually, you know? If I can get 150 bucks for it, I'd be pretty happy. If not, I'll uh, hold on to it until the next snow comes and we'll give it a try. Anyway, uh, that was it. I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Some guys like bonus footage, which is what you're getting now, in case you don't know how to replace the heater box back on again. There's really nothing to it. For those of you who are hesitant to try to work on your things, how are you ever going to figure it out if you don't try? That's all there is to it. Now look, when I first started, right, that's exactly what I did. Uh, a lot of people ask me, hey Henry, how did you get started on, on all this stuff? Well. Actually, um, it's a pretty easy and quick story. Um, I've always liked to tinker. I'll tell you a really quick story. So, why do I like to tinker? I was actually a mechanical engineer in college. Why I like tinkering? Uh, I was a little kid, about eight years old. Saturday, came downstairs after sleeping, right? I see my dad, he has got a alternator generator sitting on the kitchen table, and I asked him what he was doing. He was taking it apart and replacing the brushes, right? Because uh, he didn't want to go out and spend a ton of money on a brand new one. He just bought these brushes to replace onto the generator alternator. I sat there while I was having my eggs, and uh, I watched him the entire time, taking it apart, putting it back together, and showing me exactly how to put it back together again. Then I went and helped him to install the alternator into the car. Sure enough, started right up, and uh, that's all there was to it, you know? And then how I got into lawnmowers... Just driving around, saw a lawnmower on the street, took it home, started, but it was spewing uh, uh, smoke coming out of the head gasket. I looked, I looked at the model number, went on Google, Googled the schematics of it, saw exactly what area the, the smoke was coming out of, and uh, ordered a head gasket for like six bucks or something on eBay, replaced the head gasket, put it back on, ran great, sold it for like a hundred bucks. That's how it all started. That one lawnmower that I found on the street. And then I says, wow. That was easy. It was fun, right? Uh, it, it, it tickled my brain, you know what I'm saying? It keeps your brain sharp, makes you think, you know? And then uh, next thing you know, <laughs> I've got a YouTube channel. Found a couple of 3 8 bolts. Needs a little bit of Earl. Uh, the Earl was a little dark, but it's um, 
it's still the viscosity is good and it's up to the add line so I'm just going to add a little bit more to it uh, you want to use 5W30 for the winter these are for temperatures below 32 so it's not as thick as SAE30 this is good stuff from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products like I always say you're going to pay a little bit more, but it's worth it for good quality Earl. Yeah, I appreciate you guys also uh, hashtagging when you comment on YouTube and Instagram. Mostly it's Instagram. Helps me out with the Lucas Oil products, guys. Whenever you comment or reference me, remember to hashtag MNB Lucas. Mowers and Blowers Lucas. MNB Lucas. Appreciate it. So I got this thing going good. Uh, got some Earl in there. It's got to go. Ah, Earl. Got a couple of bolts to hold the uh, belt cover on. Everything seems to work on this thing, you know. Uh, thanks again for uh, following me along my uh, daily vlogs on how to fix equipment. And I appreciate uh, any kind of help you could give uh, me to help support the channel. Buy a sticker and also keep the videos coming. If you can donate a buck or two, you can uh, go to... Appreciate it very much. Uh, we're all set. I actually I took off that uh, ignition uh, switch from this thing because it wasn't working right. But I wanted to take it off because... They'll think that something's missing if I didn't take the whole thing off and just took the key. Now I've got another key. These all fit lawn tractors and stuff. And I'm going to have a shortage of keys. So I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Of course, when I was uh, driving this to the back, it started in my backyard instead of my garage, which is getting full. All of a sudden, it stopped. thinking or like they say in Canada oh so this is easy <laughs> I just jinxed myself loosen this the spring it's a flat closed This is good, it's not a big problem. It's just the butterfly flew out. 
things like that, like that, and there would be this. This way looks like it might be helpful. No, it's not this way, because it won't be close. So it has to be the other way. First time I've ever seen this one because it's actually only one butterfly. Usually even on lawn mowers it's two butterflies, you know? This is the first time I'm checking out one butterfly. See? You learn something each and every time, man. See how that works? You pull it. The reason why this thing popped out is because this thing is not very tight. Because it seems like this screw is loose. <laughs> Your screw is loose. You can keep turning this and it won't tighten. See? Which means this thing is not on there very tight. So I'm going to go find a thicker screw to shove in here and make it tighter so that this butterfly won't pop out. Put a new thicker screw on there. So in my downtime, I've been watching Shameless on Showtime. I'm up to season seven now. You guys are down on your luck or low on life, go watch Shameless. You're like a king compared to them. I'm a little concerned as to why this stalled. I mean, I'm glad that it stalled because that way I could try to restart it again and, you know, it um, didn't start. So that's the reason why I knew about this recall starter. But I'm a little concerned as to why it stalled. I removed this the second time. The reason why this thing keeps popping out is just that this is just designed badly. See this little metal thing here? This is all that's holding it down. So with the amount of uh, force that you use, right, to pull it, this thing, look, you can just take your finger 
and it, it wants to come back out again and pop out, you know? So that's the reason why. So this is just made really badly. Or over the over time the plastic is kind of there must be a crack in there somewhere that's making it so loose, you know? So I'm not gonna start it anymore with this thing. I'm gonna use the electric start. Um I don't know why it keeps stalling. It's probably a, a clog in the fuel line that's not allowing enough fuel to get in there. But I'm not going to mess with it anymore. It's not worth the time that I've already put into it. So I'm just going to park it in back, sell it as is. let out too much. So I had to just turn it a couple of more, uh, a quarter turn tighter. Now it runs on run. It was just too mean, you know. So that's all good. And uh, just for shits and giggles, I tried to start my uh, snow commander. It won't start again. So something's up with that magneto. Hey guys, support my channel, buy a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram, at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, mowersblowers.com.